Um, and we are here with the Toronto Terror, man. Just put on a, a great show for the weekend. Coach, uh, and your team played extremely hard. We didn't know a lot about you, but we got to know you this weekend. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, about your team, and, and how the trip was down here. In the oh, first, let me start by saying thank you so much for having us on. And also, it's a real pleasure to meet you in person. I'm a huge fan of the Love of the Game podcast. We have some mutual friends as I said, so it's it's just a tremendous pleasure to be here with you in person. Uh, the the tournament was uh, an incredible addition to our schedule. Uh, one of our mutual friends said, hey, if you guys can get down there, you know, we can get you in type deal. And this is exactly what we've been looking for with Toronto Terra. We have two teams. We're from Toronto. Uh, quick background is Toronto Terra used to be a not-for-profit that did some AAU stuff. Uh, I'm the director. My name is Menelik Fernandez. Uh, I used to coach college, used to coach pro, now I'm back in high school doing the prep thing. Sitting here with one of my lovely guards, Xavier Howard, who had himself a weekend for sure. Uh, you know, really helped control the pace, really helped dictate what we're doing. The competition down here is just A1. The media has been top notch. Everybody's really very, very pleasant officiating. I mean, usually you see guys saying bad things. I actually have heard people talking about how professional all the officials have been in terms of how they've communicated with us. Just an A1 event. Really been very happy. Trip was 19 hours. I did all the driving, so I don't recommend that for anyone, uh, but it's been definitely worth it. We're very happy with the results and just nothing but thank yous to say. Uh, you know, I'll turn it over to Ax. He can tell you a little bit about what he felt uh, playing on the floor, what he felt of the competition level, etc. But just, uh, you know, I can't stress it enough. My hat goes off. Thank you so much for running such a great event. Uh, Dave Jones from Hidden Gems, thank you for the invite. It's been a real pleasure. Xavier, all the way down from Toronto to come down to Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, what, what were your first thoughts? When you walk into the gym and you see everybody there, what, what are you thinking? How are you feeling? Uh, my first thoughts when I walked in the gym was all eyes are on us, to be honest. Everybody was kind of, I felt like everybody was kind of hoping the worst for us to, you know, they, everyone's from Atlanta, so they all want to see their own guys do, do what they're doing, and ain't nobody want to lose to some Canadian boys, and that's just facts. Um, felt like the competition was just amazing. Everyone played their heart out, and nobody was backing down from nobody, no matter what. Um, yeah, that's really, I don't So I, how you feel uh, about... Uh, how you feel about how your guys did? I mean, this is the first getaway tournament that we've done like this. Uh, did your teammates gel? How do you feel you helped out? How do you feel they helped out? What, what, what do you have to say about that? I feel like we all came down here with a lot of confidence. Like, we all came down here ready to hoop, and we ain't scared of nobody. So we all coming out to play, and we going to bang the whole game till fourth quarter. That was something that I saw on the floor. It was it was a lot of jawing out there that people automatically thought that just because you were from Toronto that you were going to back down. Obviously, they don't watch uh, a lot of basketball. I understand all the NBA guys that are from Canada right now. Yes, right? sir. Uh, is, is that something that you expected to run into? And did it, does it bother you at all that people think that just because you're from somewhere else that the game of basketball is going to be different? Uh, to be honest, it doesn't get to me. I don't let nobody else get into my head. I feel like just keeping a chip on my shoulder. Everybody else on my team got a chip on their shoulder. And we don't really care what anybody else in the stands say. It all matters about the people that are on our bench and our coach and the staff. So, Good. You um, saw a, a lot from your game. You, you were dominant, especially in pick and roll situations. Um, is that something that you look to do? When you get those pick and roll chances, is that a part of the game that you love? Or is that something that... Coach has been helping you with and working on um, in the game. Well, I feel confident with the ball in my hand off of the screen. I feel like I slow the game down. I feel like I have IQ of everything. I see all five players, all four players, sorry. Um, yeah, I feel very confident coming off the screen. Get the midi pull up, the drive, the dump off. So, yeah, it's very, I feel very comfortable coming off the pick and roll. And I feel like he set that up very well for me. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. We saw you put the guys in, in the right position all weekend. You got a good mix of, of shooters and ball handlers. <laughs> um, Coach, what, what, what's the philosophy for this program and how you approach these games and coach your team? Uh, well, the philosophy is always to try and do it the right way. I mean, move the ball, make the right pass, hit the right shot, take the right shot, lift each other up as much as possible. We actually had 
one gentleman on our red team not play as well as he could have and all the guys were there for him like all we can just like keep doing next play keep it up uh you know and, and we we made adjustments to help each other out and we, I mean, it depends who you speak to. We're undersized a bit, right? Like we are 6'2 to 6'6. Six, six. And because of that, we have to play in a different style where we're all rebounding down. We're five to the glass. We're trying to move in space and cut hard and get open shots, create double teams and get off the ball as quickly as possible. So the philosophy is always the same. The difference is, you know, the horses that are in the race, so to speak, right? The, some gentlemen will adapt quicker, some will adapt slower, and we try to speak to each other. And I don't mean we like the coaching staff. We as a group, or two teams, try to speak to each other with respect. Even, you know, in the heat of battle when you're between the four lines, it doesn't always come out the best way, but we know that that's competition, and we try to go next play and raise each other up and elevate the basketball as much as possible. And I think at the end of the day, both teams showed it. We play hard and we play for each other. Right. Uh, one of our mutual friends, uh, BT, was down here this weekend. He was like, man, all I can say is you guys play hard. We didn't come out on top in every game, but there wasn't a possession that we took off. And I would hang my hat on that, and I'm proud of my gentlemen. Nonetheless, lots of film. We'll be able to work. We'll be able to get better. You don't want to see us later on in the year. And, and I, you know, competition level was fantastic, and my hat goes off to all the coaches. But I mean that. We're only going to get better from here. Thanks. Absolutely. Um, Zach, uh, what are your thoughts on, on your future, man? Um, do, do you have a, a, a dream school? Is there certain schools that you grew up watching and you say, man, if I get an opportunity, I would love to go and play there? Or is it just, I, I, I just want to play? Uh, to be honest, for me, it's all just step by step and see what comes to me. But if I'm being honest, the dream school, I was, I'm trying to play for North Carolina. That has always been a dream for me. It wasn't even before even thinking about the NBA. It was always I want to play for North Carolina. So yeah, definitely for sure have a team, a school out there that I definitely want to go to. Hey man, I know a lot of kids don't have dream schools anymore, but growing up as a player, that was always a big thing for us. For sure, uh, for sure. And I love a kid that loves playing college basketball. Coach, um, as you see these kids, I saw that they were extremely unselfish. It looked like you guys were just trying to get the ball to the right person to get the right shot. Is that um, about more about the kids that you put together, or is that something that you put into the team to kind of trust what you guys will do? As a coach, you love to be able to take credit, but, I mean, at the end of the day, it's always your players, right? Coaches are responsible for losing. I mean, you get yourself in the way a lot of the time. Players are responsible for winning. And I try to – so I believe very much in the feedback spectrum – and the closer you become towards being professional at what you do, external feedback needs to be less and internal feedback needs to be more. So what I mean by that for anybody who's listening, you have to trust your athletes to be able to speak to each other, correct their own mistakes, play through their mistakes, and continue to get better. My time is in film. I'll say what I want to say in film. I try to make fewer adjustments. And if you came and watched one of our practices, coaches, you're always welcome, please come out. Uh, but if you came and watched one of my practices, we're playing pretty much for everything. We're playing within scenarios, we're playing in small-sided games, we're doing less of skill development stuff in practice, that's usually outside. We're doing more playing where guys are talking, correcting, competing, and I think that creates that kind of environment, and hopefully it is translating to here. Gotcha. Coach, um, tell us where uh, people can find you guys uh, where you'll be playing next. If they wanted to come by and stop by practice, how do they get in touch with you? Yeah, it's uh, amazing. Thank you. So uh, we have a website set up that is torontoterror.com, and this website will literally give you everything about us. It's got every game we've played, both teams. It's got all of our players. Uh, it's got all of the games, like all the film is up there. All the score sheets are up there. All the stats are up there. Uh, I know there's a lot of guys who like to obfuscate stuff like that. I don't. I want coaches to be able to see what my guys can do so that they can see the growth over time. Uh, and then, so, torontoterror.com for sure. We are terror underscore prep on both Instagram and Twitter. Please like, follow. Uh, and then I am terror underscore bball, and I'm in the profile for the Toronto Terror prep one. Uh, terror underscore uh, bball is me. Please feel free to get in touch, reach out to me. And if you actually just Google my name, 
Metal like Fernandez. I'm at the top. My phone number is readily accessible. Please reach out. Uh, currently, we're practicing in a couple different locations in Toronto, uh, just because we're we're relatively new. Uh, so that being said, reach out. We'd be happy to host you, have you for a nice lunch, give you the background on any player you wanted to know. And in terms of where we're playing next, we're Road Warriors at this point. We are in uh, Pennsylvania in two weeks, which is the middle of October. We are in North Carolina for the beginning of November. We're in Florida for three weeks in December. And then in the beginning of January, we're down in Texas. So we're out, we're on the road, we're trying to do as much as possible. And for anybody who wants to have a game, we're always, we're not ducking anybody. Come on out, uh, you know, let us, let us come to you if we have to. And, you know, please, we want all the smoke. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Coach, appreciate you giving us Thank the time. Thanks you. for stopping by. Xavier, thanks for stopping by. Appreciate you guys. You guys played great. One of the better teams I saw for the weekend. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Appreciate you.